Welcome everyone, my name is Quado. I'm excited to present the second intermediate milestone of my course. Today, we're exploring of our journey so far in the world of virtual reality, 3D modeling, and printing. We will be taking a closer look at the progress we have made, the key milestone that we have achieved, and the exciting path that lies ahead. I'm eager to share with you some of the outstanding outcome of our course, including a sneak peek into the capability of Blender and Ocasizer, embark on a journey together, and discover the endless possibility of this technology has to offer. The following video will show the outcome of the course. You get to see how the student make in 3D using VR, their design thinking process of designing it, and the outcome of the product. You'll be surprised to know children can do 3D modeling better than us. Our student, she wants to model and 3D print a cat based on her real pet. She did everything from scratch, from making the overall shape of the cat, to adding details, creating fur texture, and sculpting. And she's only in 6th grade, and her mom was amazed at her ability. Look at the final result. Such a great job. Please give her a big clap. Our student designed a birthday gift for his mom. He sketched his idea on paper first, then he modeled his design on the computer. Can you guess what's he making? Yeah. He received his final product and did post-processing. Tidal is a business card holder for his mom's nail salon. Final product. Follow us for more STEAM activities. Here is the preview lesson of the first card in Blender. I will teach you how to make a snowman in roughly around 10 minutes that you learn to use most of the basic tools in Blender. So we start with opening Blender. So if you open the file from my website, this is what you see. It will be the base for your snowman. And so as we all know, the bottom of the snowman, what can you tell me about the shape of it? So, we're going to add mesh and it will call UV sphere. And when you add in, it will be the tiny UV sphere at the bottom. And now our first job is to make it bigger so it can fit the whole base. So we go to the scale tool. So look on your left corner, right here. And you will see a big white circle along with blue, green, and red square. So what you want to do is only click inside a white circle without touching the other square. And then drag your mouse to scale them up, just like this. And now we choose the right scaling for the snowman. After that, the next tool we're going to use is called the move tool. So again, on the left toolbar, click on it, and then you'll see the tree arrow. And then, see we want to move it up, we're going to use the the blue arrow and drag it up until it just slightly above the base. Okay, now we got the base for our snowman. The next part, we're gonna make the body. So we do the same process set again. Add, mesh, and then UV sphere. So earlier, we used the scale tool to make it bigger, but you can also use the hotkey. And to know the hotkey name, just place a cursor over it and if you see on the shortcut it will be a letter S so when we try to press S we can do the same thing, make it bigger and smaller and then for the move there's also a hotkey, it's called Chi so we can press Chi and now we get to move it freely but we only want to move it on the vertical axis so how do we know which one is the vertical axis? So look on the top right corner, you will see X, Y, and Z. So Z are the vertical. And see we only move on the Z, so we press Z on the keyboard. Now we're able to move it up. And we got the body. 
and let's do one more time for the hat with the same process. UV sphere, make it big with S, and move it with G, and Z to move it up. Now we got the base, the body, and the head of the snowman. So, who can tell me about the shape of the nose of the snowman in 3D? Uh, to look for the name, we go back to Add and go to Mesh. And what can you tell me from all this shape? Is it a cube, cylinder, or cone? Actually, instead of making the nose first, let's make the half of the snowman first. So, based on the snowman I have on my hand, what do you think will be the shape? Yep, and it's called cylinder. So we're gonna add a cylinder in there. Do the same process again. Make it bigger. Move it up. And here's the reason why sometimes you, instead of using a hotkey, you want to use the tool one. So click on the scale. Now, you can make the hat super long or super short based on what you like using the blue square which stands for the Z axis so I'm gonna make my hat like super long just like Lincoln hat and now we got the hat but how do we make a wing around it so let's try another mesh see what shape fits the most so in this case you can use another, another cylinder move it on top of the hat again make it bigger really big but make it flat make it smaller so this one way the other way we can do have anyone ever eat a donut before if you have there's a similar shape in 3d and it's called torus again make it bigger with s move it up with g and z and now we got the hat for the snowman okay we are 50% into the snowman. Now, let's start making the nose of it. So earlier, the nose is a cone, right? So we're going to add the cone. Again, make it big. And move it up. But now, this is a problem. The cone is inside our snowman. In order to see inside the snowman, we can use a tool it's called the X-ray tool. And we can find it on the top right corner of the screen, right here. Click on it. You will see there's a transparent cone right here. So now we want to move it to the front of the snowman. And in order to do that, we're going to use the green arrow to move it back and forth. And so to an easy way to see it, if on this gizmo right here, when you click on X, you go to the side view. And now you can use the blue arrow again, no, the green arrow to move it to the front. And now we're going to use the next tool in our 3D toolbox. It's called a rotate tool. So click on rotate. And then we want to move it to the, the front. So we're going to use the red circle and rotate it. And in order to rotate to the exact angle, look on the right side on the transform panel. You see that the X is now 74. But I want to make it into 90 degree. So I'll click on it and tap 90. And we will be exactly 90 degree. So we're going to tap the X ray more again. Yep, now we got the nose. So it's time to do the right average snowman. And you've been doing it process before. Just repeat it one more time. Oh, one more hotkey to add an object. So you can click on add, or you can press Shift A. Which is doing the same thing. So add a UV sphere, move it up to the eye. Now we we'll go to the side view again. Use the move tool and move it to the front. So I will have a challenge for you all. So we have done the right eye. Now I want everyone to make the left eye in around 60 seconds. You think you can do that? Okay, time's up. Now, it's a challenge for me, okay? So I will change from the right eye to the left eye 
in less than 10 seconds. So first, I'm going to go to the add modifier and use the mirror. And now, we have to choose the mirror object to the eye. So, I have the mirror right here on my hand. So the distance between you and the mirror is based on how far is it. So we want the, the left eye mirror to the right eye. So the mirror object is going to be the head of the snowman. So I click on the eyedropper and click on the head. Yes, I have done the eye for the snowman. Now we got the eye, the nose. Now let's move forward to making button for the snowman. Send the same process again. But I'm going to use to teach you a different tool this time. So we know that the button we're going to be at the body. So the new, new tool we're going to use is called duplicate. So go to object, duplicate, and you got the button. Now I'm going to make it smaller, pressing S. So I got one button for the snowman. And now we're going to make multiple buttons for the snowman. So we can use the hotkey again. But this time, I'm going to use different duplicate. I call it duplicate link. So every use on it, I'm going to write Shift D, click, Shift D, click, and Shift D, click. Now we got the snowman with all the buttons. Yep, I think we're done with the snowman. But wait, I add a name for it too. So just click on the name, go on object mode, click on edit, and click on edit mode. And now you can type your name in there. So this is my name. And in order to make the name fit your base, you can increase the dimension by using the scale tool, as we mentioned earlier. Change the red one, and now you can fill your, all your name. Okay, now we're done with the snowman. It's time to color them. So in order to color the snowman, we go to material. And we, so I will color the nose of the snowman first. So let's start by using the color orange. Click on the nose, click new, and now on the base color, let's change to orange. But wait, it's still the same gray color. So what happened? So in order to see the color change, we go to the viewport shading, and now you see the orange color. And now we can do the same for the hat. New. And now change to black. So on the black bar, it's on the right hand side. Drag it down all the way to the bottom. And we can do the same again by choosing it right here. For the eye too. But how to change all the color quickly. Since you're creating make the black color. The easy way to shift click the first object, the second one, the third and the fourth one. Then click on the object you want to change the color to, which is the eye in this time. And press control L and click on link material and now you got all the color you want okay that's all for class today thank you for attending to continue we we'll show you how to export from blender and now using ocas slicer to prepare for 3d printing this the main interface of Oka Slicer. From here, you can add different printer by clicking on the left side, go to add and remove printer. From there, you can choose different printer based on your need. And for this one, I'm going to use the X1C Car Bourbon, which is the current printer that prints really fast. And now you want to add a model by clicking add and choose the model inside your computer that will export from Blender earlier. And here we got the snowman ready. So on the left side there's many layer settings but with the slicer already optimized we just need to focus on mostly one thing which is the support. Like for the snowman you see the nose at an angle really steep that's why we need to change it with enable support and then when you hit slice place it will still start slicing the 3d model and here we can see how to support it helps 
print the thing that is meant there. But it will print like this. When we check it out, it will be really hard to remove. So we change a new support setting. We call the tree support. And here. So what difference between the tree support and the normal support? Is the tree support going to organic structure? That we will see in a moment soon. As you look like it, most of the support start at the bottom and only the tip of the tree will touch what needs to be support. Therefore, you will spend less effort to remove the support while maintaining the beauty of the 3D print. And after that, all we need to do is hit print play and then you're done. But for those that don't have the printer that can connect to the Wi-Fi, you can choose different printer like, for example, Creality and the tree, which is the popular one right now. You do the same process. Choose support. Slice again. And now we wait for the result. So it's also print, but look at the time now. It takes more time to print based on the different generation of printer. But this time, instead of export it to the printer, we export to the cheat code file, and then you just choose the folder of the SD card, then plug it into the printer. So, how the 3D printer work? It's gonna print it at the bottom layer, so all the way to the bottom. And this will show you how the nozzle gonna go. So first, it will draw the support, the print around it, and then print the support at the base, as you can see. And now, it will go to the first layer, second layer, doing the same thing to bring the support into the inner of the snowman, and the process keep going all the way to the top, as you can see. So this is how the GT printer work from the bottom to the top layer. That's why for object in mid air, for example, the nose right here, it needs the support until it can gap between them. This segment of the presentation focus on the limitation I have encountered in the project. Recognize this challenge is crucial as it provide key learning insight and highlight area for future development. First is technical constraint. So I face a technical constraint such as limitation in the hardware and process power for the student for them to create a high complex 3D model without lacking the computer. The second one is the resource av availability such as we need tool and material for 3D printing and the time to treat freedom to meet the demand of each student. Third is a skill level variation. For each student, they have different skill level. Some of them already know 3D, some of them don't. So adapting to different learning paths is crucial to ensuring that our students could effectively engage with the technology. Next is the scope of the course. Because of VR and 3D model, it's really big. So we need to strategically select the content that focus on the student, leave of them for future exploration. And final is the in-person versus online learning, because many concepts it easier to explain in person, such as how to press a certain button in VR with your, the motion controller, and to show the click on the key and on the screen on a computer using a recording. Because of all of those, it's hard to translate them to well to an online medium. And even though the limitation both a challenge, they also offer valuable lesson. Each obstacle has provided an insight for enhancing for the future course, ensuring continuous improvement and adaptation to involving the educational landscape. As I bring today's session to a close. I want to reflect on our shared journey to the exciting world of virtual reality, 3D modeling, and 3D printing. 
Each milestone we have reached together has been an important part in our collective learning and growth. The progress we have made so far has been greatly enriched by your feedback as I prepare for the final project. Your insight and suggestion are more valuable than ever. I invite you to share your thought and perspective to have shaped the crucial phrase in our course. I move forward with enthusiasm and a commitment to incorporating your feedback. The success of the final project hinge on our collaborative effort. With your support and insight, I'm confident that we can make this final project a remarkable culmination of our journey in VR, 3D modeling, and 3D printing.